if the probability that z is greater than a is equal to 0 0.0259, find a. All right, so we're talking about looking for a z-score that is greater than some value a, or um, not a z-score, but we want to know what the boundary a is because we're interested in the probability of values that are greater than a. And we're talking about z-scores, so that means we know that the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So this is a standard normal distribution. And if the probability of something being greater is 0 0.0259, that's a very tiny probability. So I know that this z-score is going to be somewhere way over on the right with a very tiny um, probability to the right there of 0 0.0259. So now I know that A is a positive z-score that's greater than, well, I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but it's definitely going to be positive. So I'm just ballparking where I'm putting it. And then I'm going to find the left area, which is 1 minus the given probability. And the reason that I want to do this is because when you're using the z tables, you, most z tables are set up to, to work with left areas. And the norm.dist function in Excel is also set up for left areas. So I want to find this by doing 1 minus. 0 0.0259 because we know the whole area under the bell curve adds up to 1. So if we're splitting it into two segments and one of the segments is 0 0.0259 area, then the other segment will be 1 minus that. So that will equal 1 minus 0 0.0259 will be 0 0.9741. So that's this area here. Okay. That's my left area. All right, now the reason I need a left area is so that I can use it to find this answer here, the A value, which is a z-score. So A, which is a z-score, is going to be found using norm.inverse with my left area probability and the mean of 0 and the standard deviation of 1. Um, now the standard deviation, uh, the mean and the standard deviation are 0 and 1 because we're dealing with z-scores, okay? So um, that's not always the case if you're looking for a boundary. Sometimes if it's a non-standard distribution, a non-standard normal distribution with a different mean and a different standard deviation, you just want to make sure to input those correctly. And now we want to put in the left area that we found by subtracting from 1, so 0.9741. Okay, now um, you can also type in 1 minus 0 0.0259 right into the norm.inverse function before you put the comma for the mean and then the standard deviation. And then you get this answer here, which if you copy and paste that into the problem, you'll get it right. Um, make sure to pay attention to any rounding recommendations, but that should be your answer. All right, now that makes sense because I knew I was looking for a value that was positive and it's just a little further to the left than I, you know, imagined it would be. But it's still a good answer that makes sense according to how I've sketched everything out. And so that's my final answer using the Excel function norm.inverse. All right, so now let's look at how we can do this with the z-score table. So once again, we knew to set this up with the uh, boundary on the right side of the mean, or in other words, a positive z-score, because the area to its right was going to be so small. And we knew to shade to the right because it had a greater than sign. OK, so all of that set up, I'm looking at it. I want to go use the z-score table. Well, when I go to look at my z-score table, I know that everything in the z-score table is set up with left probabilities. So I do want to look in the positive z-score table, and I'm going to look up the, the value, um, excuse me, the area to the left of um, the z-score I'm looking for, which I figured out to be 0 0.9741. So looking up 0 0.9741 in the body of the table, I don't find it, but I find two values 
that it's close to. And that would line up with positive 1.94 or positive 1.95, or rather in between those two. So now I have two answers that um, are basically on either side of the answer I'm looking for. So if I find the middle between these two answers, 1.94 and 1.95, I'll get 1.945. Okay, in other words, um, I didn't find the exact probability I was looking for in the table, so I found two probabilities that it was close to, and I'm going to average them. So the two z scores I found, I found that a was going to be in between the value 1.94 and 1.95, and if I find the midpoint in between those two values, I can just average them or add them up and divide by 2. So adding up 1.94 plus 1.95 divided by 2 gives you the answer that's midway between those two, 1.945. So that's how you could also answer this using the z-score table. All right, hope that helped. See you in the next one.